So look, I don't know about anybody else, but I think I'm about through with brokenness. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's the fourth Sunday in our brokenness themed month, but I think three, I think I did, about did it, you know, for me. I'm, I, I'm good. I'm ready. You know, enough uh, deaths, enough hospitalizations, enough heartbreak, certainly been enough injustice, and I'm ready to move on. Ready for the new day. Anybody else out there? Yes? All right. All right. Yeah, we got, we got spring. We got flowers blossoming. We got birds singing. We got greening. I mean, we had the vernal equinox, right? So, so I think by vote, but wait, <laughs> when it comes to the themes of the month, we, we don't use our democratic process. We're committed, so I'm sorry about it. Brokenness it is. One more time. And so it is with life so often, right? We, we don't get a choice in the matter. When it rains, it pours. Actually, there are a fifth five Sundays in, in this March. <laughs> uh, but, but we'll be lifting up a lot of good news next week as well. And I hope today, too. But, but you all can resonate with this, right? You know, you've, how many of you, you know, you've had times in your life where, where just, just when you get through one calamity, you know, you, you lose your job, you know, then, then, then you get through another, there's, you know, there's a breakup in your life, and then, and then there's another, help me out here, some of life's woes, what, what you got, what you got, cancer. then cancer, and you get through cancer, and you start to see the light, you feel like you're finding your footing, and then, boom, something else, right? That's, that's, that's how it so often goes. And it's like, really? 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 I don't know why I'm looking up. I'm in the point here. So, <laughs> Really? Really? It's like I got the lesson, you know? I got, I, 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 I'm not invincible. I'm not in control. Life is precious each day. I got it. Okay, I need to slow down. The, the, the crack is where the light gets in. I'm not alone in this. Everything is eventually lost. These aren't trite spiritual aphorisms, right? That's some serious learning. I've been doing heavy work here. So come on. Come on. What's the deal? It can feel sometimes like we're caught in a never-ending rerun of the same old story of loss, struggle, pain, loneliness, it's, it's hard to, to tell. It's certainly hard to live. Are you still, still nursing that aching back, huh? Still, still got that knee injury? St- still, still got problems with that shoulder there? Still grieving that loss? Oh, marital troubles? Still? Still fighting with that parent, that child, that colleague? Or oh, you're still wrestling with depression? Still having trouble with drink, still struggling financially, you're still unemployed, still with that guy, still single, still struggling with chronic illness. Yeah, it's chronic. (laughs) Another car wreck, another cold, another application denial, another failed relationship, another miscarriage. Another disappointment. We've all felt caught in broken record brokenness one way or another. And you know, some of us, to, to some degree at least, many, many of us may feel like we're in the midst even now. We know that often there is, though, to, to some extent, at least a, a discernible why behind some of our pain, at least we, we can understand it with, with time. We can see its meaning. Maybe trial after trial after trial was preparing us for some greater purpose. Or it was a bottom that we just needed to hit in order to, to face and to find freedom from our brand of chosen broken record brokenness. That's the 
the kind of brokenness that I think Khalil Gibran is talking about when he describes a pain that is self-chosen. He says this kind of pain is the bitter potion by which the physician within heals your sick self and urges us to trust the physician, though his hand is heavy and hard. But often the why for the brokenness in our lives is far more elusive. Great philosophers and religious prophets and thinkers have been struggling with that meaning-making work for millennia at least, and no one that I'm aware of at least has come up with a conclusive, sufficient enough answer to end our questioning, at least not for good UU seekers like us, right? The why for brokenness seems buried deeply in some covenant with chaos in the universe's design that that we'll likely never fully understand. But we sign on to this covenant. In a sense, we sign on to it anew each day we get up and choose to live in this broken world anyway. Despite the seemingly senseless suffering we see and experience, despite the broken record, brokenness. And that's really what I want to explore and dig in to with you all more today. What happens through that extraordinarily courageous, simple act of saying yes anyway? What breakthroughs we experience, we can expect when in the face of broken record brokenness, we still choose to say yes to life. We say yes to the new day, even with all its potential to be as broken as many yesterdays. Because in addition to that child that we all have within us that that knows how to use that word no very well, no, 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 no. There is also within us a deep and sacred yes that has more power than we know. Certainly more power than our no. So if In any of the services, uh, there's one in which I can safely quote this next guy, although I think I could probably get away with it in all of them. It's this one here. Frederick Nietzsche actually has one of my favorite takes on this. Yes, I was forced to read Nietzsche. I never self-selected to do that. (laughs) I read him in my Christian ethics class at Harvard Divinity School as a contrast, you know, in dialogue with some other Christian ethics. And uh, um, he wrote this book, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Um, I'm not going to ask how many of you have read it. If you you happen uh, not to have read Nietzsche, you might be a little bit surprised by... uh, by the way he writes, much more poetic than certainly I knew. So anyway, Zarathustra is, is this uberman. You've heard of that, like the, the, the man that overcomes the, the adversity of life. And uh, he speaks about what in the face of, of pain that says refrain, he draws upon. He says, but there is something in me that I call courage. And this so far has slain my every discourage. Courage slays dizziness at the abyss. And where do human beings not stand at the abyss? As deeply as human beings look into life, so deeply too they look into suffering. But courage says, was that life? Well then, one more time. Have you ever said yes to one joy? Zarathustra asks. Oh, my friends, then you have also said yes to all pain. All things are enchained, entwined, enamored. If you ever wanted one time, two times, then you wanted everything back. Oh, thus 
You loved the world. You eternal ones. Love it eternally and for all time. And say to pain also, refrain, but come back. For your joy wants eternity. If you ever wanted one time, two times, you said yes to it all. Was that life? Well then, one more time. Y'all seen that movie Groundhog Day? Yeah? Okay, good. Well, well for those of you who haven't, uh, or, or if it's been a little while, 1993 it came out. Uh, I'll give you a little refresher. This was starring the legend himself, Bill Murray, and Andy McDowell, co-starring, who also had her few days in the sun there for a while. Uh, and, and it's all about this weatherman who... Uh, is very bitter and curmudgeon about the fact that he's not the lead anchorman. He wants something more for his life. And, and the thing that he hates the most about his job is that every year he has to go to Puxatawney, Pennsylvania and cover that damn gopher, <laughs> Puxatawney Phil, as he gets out and gives the annual forecast that every year, it takes place in Pennsylvania, guess what? Six more weeks of winter. And... Uh, and, and, he, and he hates it, he hates it, you know, it's a small town, it's so beneath him. And so it follows this day where he goes and has just the kind of day that he would expect to have, miserable, he hates the forecast, the, the, the coverage, the townspeople are aggravating, steps in this big, horrible puddle, and, you know, the, the shower doesn't work, no hot water. All he wants to do is just to get back to Pittsburgh. But this blizzard comes through that actually just the day before he had forecast was going to blow to the north. <laughs> and, uh, and he can't. He can't get back. He's stuck. He has to come back to Poxitani. But it's worse than that because he wakes up the next morning to, now here's a real pop quiz. Anybody remember uh, what's on the radio? Sure. Wow. <laughs> Put your little hand in mine. And, uh, and he finds that he's, reliving the same day as Groundhog Day again in this miserable town. And it happens again and again and again and again. And he's, he's totally trapped. And it's so brilliant because, of course, we can resonate with Murray's predicament. It, you know, we've all felt caught in Groundhog Days at some point in our life. You know, the alarm goes off. We groggily come to consciousness in the same room in the same town, with the same work day ahead, and, and often with the same heavy feeling in our hearts that we went to sleep with the night before. And, and it may be a new calendar day, but sometimes it sure doesn't feel like a new day. Because there are seasons in our life where the brokenness can, can feel so reliably unchangeable that we almost feel stuck in time. We can't get to that new day. We, we just can't get to Pittsburgh which I realize is an ironic representation for uh, freedom, but, you know, everything's <laughs> relative, I guess. <laughs> and, and, and Murray goes through all these stages that we also recognize in grappling with this reality day after day. Bewilderment, bafflement, confusion, then like, ah, fix this, this has to be fixable. And then trying to numb it, drinking away the pain into oblivion, and then saying, F it then I'm just going to break all the rules and eating and eating and drinking and making merry and playing the game and getting girl after girl for one night stands and robbing the bank and all these things. And, he, and then, he tries to, then he tries to earn Andy McDowell's character's love and affection by playing the game too. And, uh, and then day after day, that ends the same way with slap, slap, slap across his face. And gradually... He gives up hope of that approach and, and tries to escape, tries to really escape. He tries every which way to destroy himself and, and is completely unable to do that as well, waking up still every day and, and becomes totally exhausted, finally, finally accepting his fate, his brokenness, and reaching out from that authentic place. And he actually connects with Andy McDowell's character, able to, to relay his story, and, and she gives him not only 
connection back, but, but this wisdom lightheartedly that, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's not a curse. Maybe it's, maybe it's all about how you look at it. And he wakes up the next morning, not a lot of fanfare with, with Sonny and Cher as his soundtrack, yet again, and you see him have this moment, and he goes, yes. Yes to the day in a new way, a deeper way. Yes to life itself and to those with whom he shares it day after day. Yes to becoming fully himself. Yes to me working this Groundhog Day movie for all it's worth. Yes to doing what he loves, to sharing what he loves, and realizing his potential to give to others without expecting anything in return. He has a broken record breakthrough. For those of us that are are not actually trapped in the same calendar day, thank God, but who still experience plenty of broken record brokenness, the thing is about the the scratches in the in the disc and in the record of, of life is is rather than tra- traveling along some shiny new perfect vinyl thread that's never been used before, as we bump up against those broken places, those scratches in the vinyl, time and time again, if we're paying attention, it's hard to miss the fact that we're not on a linear journey. And if ever there was a lesson we need to learn time and time again, it's so easy to become destination-oriented, but those scratches on the record of life remind us, those scratches that trip us up, that knock us back, that leave us limping, at least for a while, they shine a light on that cyclical reality that we're usually too embedded in our own track, our own groove, to see. You know, by about the third or fourth time, we come around to that same spot, and we, we feel that ouch. And we try and dig deep to move forward. We have that realization. Oh dear, I've been here before. Holy, I'm traveling in circles. <laughs> and so then on top of, of, of that pain, we have to respond to that realization that this brokenness is somehow fundamentally in, in some unchangeable way, part of the nature of life itself. It's built into the threads. It's built into the vinyl. We're going to come back around to it again. No. No, 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 not good. So this Belgian physicist, Ilya Prigogine, anyone? No idea if I'm getting it right. Let's say that I am. Uh, who won the Peace Prize in the 1970s had this, for, for this uh, really seismic realization in physics, but also in life. Um, he proposed that the stimulus for creating harmony out of disharmony, order out of disorder, it's actually the opposite of what we imagine. It's actually throwing a monkey wrench into the works that stimulates the creation of new structures at an atomic level, and new meanings at a personal level. His theory of dissipative structures states that small perturbations, he calls them, but but we know what what we're talking about there, small F-ups in a system may be damped out, swamped by the status quo, so that no real change is produced. But the monkey wrench, when the monkey wrench is big enough, If the perturbation is strong enough, the system can't absorb the shock, and an opening is created for the whole structure to undergo a startling change and escape to a higher order. Broken record brokenness that pushes us to that point where we feel like we're at our very limit can in this way transform our limits into a tipping point to a new way. When we can keep reaching for yes, reaching for that new paradigm, that new understanding, reaching for that new day that does exist somehow, even amidst the the groundhog day reality of brokenness that feels like it's already pushed us to our limit, an opening is created 
for transformation of our perception, right? We see the same old day with new eyes. We rise to a high enough altitude to perceive that, holy Moses, the world is not flat. It's round. There really isn't a a night today advancement of calendar days as at all as as the flaming lips famously put it you realize that the sun doesn't go down it's just an illusion caused by the world spinning round wow we really are spinning here on this globe for what time we have as we circle the sun orbiting on our thread of the disk of the solar system, which is also spinning away along with billions of other solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy, which is also spinning away, away with, yes, billions of other galaxies, holy magnum mysterium. It's crazy. So maybe, maybe it really is about how we spin how we spin together, how we navigate the circle of life. Maybe, just maybe, it is about the music we create together on the disc we're traveling, brokenness included, brokenness essential. And then, once we realize that, it's all about practice. Right? Every day. Yes, again. That's what Murray does in Groundhog Day. He literally practices every day. He turns each day into a practice. He takes up piano lessons, literally. And and he, he, he learns to ice sculpt in the same way, practicing daily. He starts reading Chekhov and Shakespeare, and and he practices incorporating this into his morning coverage of Poxitani Phil, which in the end is like having everybody damping at their eyes. And and, and it's over the top. It really is, of course. Uh, but, But it's also hard not to get a little warm inside, watching him at work, building his whole day around being there for others in need learning to be able to change a tire for a car of elderly ladies just as they get their flat, catching a boy falling out of a tree every day at the exact same time, who never thanks him, (laughs) giving the Heimlich to a, a man who's choking, and generally using the gifts that he is practicing every day to bring joy to others. He also practices living with the loneliness that... He is still in this broken record where every day the connections he forms with others are wiped clean. But it's a Hollywood movie, so in the end he does actually get the girl, and good things happen in our lives too, right? When he's given up on getting her, that's when instead of, and he's instead practicing loving and caring for her for love's sake, knowing that he can expect no return, living out his love this way, day after day and time, he finally breaks through that strange Poxitani purgatory into an actual new calendar day. He wakes up, and uh, it's February 3rd. Though having seen the beauty of the town that he's been living in and the way of, of living itself that he's discovered, His first suggestion is is not surprisingly, let's stay here. Many of us are are probably familiar in at least a a vague way with the Hindu concept of reincarnation. This idea that our entire life may, to some extent, be one day in a soul's journey through many groundhog lives until breaking through into a, a new day of higher realization. Growing up in, uh, in the Western world with Western frameworks I, frameworks, I used to think this idea was, was pretty crazy. But having learned to find truth in different ways, I definitely see the truth in this philosophy, this perception of reality. And we have to take good care, of course, 
not to romanticize human suffering. There isn't anything romantic about it. I was recently chastened when I, I realized that Viktor Frankl uses the same story of being commanded to take stones, uh, Serbian prisoners being commanded uh, after World War II to take stones from one pile and then move it, you know, with all this pain and, and struggle to another pile only to be told to bring it back. And, and, and Viktor Frankl, his whole philosophy and, look, uh, and book is about our ability to find meaning in almost anything. And, and he lifts this up as truly senseless suffering that really degrades the human spirit. But I recognized in that it's the same story of this Buddhist uh, great teacher, Milarepa, who was forced to do that very same thing on his journey to enlightenment by his teacher. So there is both spiritual learning, but we have to be careful to honor the fact that suffering is not something that we're necessarily meant to experience in the kind of broken record ways we sometimes do that are so crushing and and so painful. And that's actually something that I love about the Bhagavad Gita because Krishna in it emphasizes the call to act anyway, to engage in this cyclical life that we're giving, to work to alleviate suffering, ours and others, not to resign ourselves to to some broken record, brokenness, conditioning us for, for future eternal enlightenment. He says, keep moving. There's an acknowledgement in that that there will be pain. Saul Alinsky puts it this way, when you move, there's friction. Just earlier this week, as if he knew what was on my mind, a, a trainer at a gym I've been going to said, well, anytime you move, you're liable to experience some pain, some hurt, some old hurt or, or new. Just yesterday in my yoga practice, just at the end, when I'm almost at Shavasana, I was almost there, I tried a new pose I didn't quite fully understand and ended up pulling my neck, waking up with this prick in the neck, you, you can't, you can't move without pulling a muscle from time to time. But when, as long as you have breath, you say yes to the day anyway, you can realize that you, that you, that you are the new day. You. Your love of life makes the day new. Your music, our music, makes the new day. And as we circle round and round in my experience, I find that rather than, like that record, our circle tightening, spiraling towards an eventual end point, that actually our circle widens so that like Rilke we can live our life in widening circles that reach across the world knowing that even though we may not completely complete that last one we will give ourselves to it fully that's the new day you are the new day. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in online. We are so pleased with all the different people who have been tuning in from all over the country and all over the world to our ministry and what we're doing at All Souls here in Tulsa. If you have a chance to send me an email or connect with me in some way, let me know what you're finding, why you tune in, and what you're getting out of it. I would love to hear from you. I'm always pleased when I get messages from different people who tell me 
all kinds of things about the impact of All Souls Tulsa's ministry on them and their lives and their families. And if you get a chance to make a gift to support this ministry, to become a partner, we would love to partner with you and have you be a friend of the church and somebody who is actually supporting us to create this congregation and the world that we're trying to create together. You can be a part of it, and every gift of every amount makes a difference. We really appreciate your support.